Hi, this is Mr Evans. This video looks at contingency planning. It's the bullet point here and uh, I expect you're as pleased as I am that it's the final bullet point on the specification. So uh, what is contingency planning? Well, it's the act of identifying both internal and external threats to an organisation and considering the possible responses to them. So the phrase hope for the best but prepare for the worst is kind of relevant here. Um, there are three elements to contingency planning. There's the actual planning process, which I'll talk about in a moment. There's risk management, which is once we've identified what the risks our organisation are facing, what are the potential contingencies, we can then put in steps to kind of manage that risk uh, in advance and prevent it from actually happening in the first place. So that's very, very important. Like once we identify these risks, we don't want them to happen. So let's manage those so it's less likely that they will happen. So things like you doing a fire drill in school or um, any other kind of rehearsals that, that, that you do and knowing where the fire um, extinguishers are, all of that is about risk management and preventing the potential disastrous impact of uh, a, uh, an event occurring. Crisis management, on the other hand, is when something actually has occurred, what are we going to do about it? Um, my dad worked in local government for a long time and one of the things that he did was um, crisis uh, management where uh, it was really clear they had a, um, a, you know, a, a procedure to go to when a crisis happened and um, you know, they would practice you know, uh, he worked for local government, so it was things like who would be uh, the local government communicating with re residents, who would the chief of police uh, be in charge of coordinating with local government, and, and things like that, and, and how would they communicate, where would they set up a, a, an office, etc. So crisis management is about having a clear plan to do what when a crisis occurs. So what are the potential contingencies that could affect a business? Well, I'm recording this in February 2018. There's a lot of talk about a hard Brexit and how that might affect British businesses in the UK. So many of them are doing contingency planning now um, uh, for the impact of Brexit. An economic downturn would have a potential impact on a business and is quite likely to happen at any point. A new competitor could enter the market, new technology might make your product obsolete, there could be some sort of catastrophe, either a one that potentially could have been averted with better management like the BP oil disaster or the Malaysian Airlines uh, disaster. They had a really two incidents very close together that were both uh, tragic. One was a plane being shot down um, and one was a plane went missing. Um, and they happened in, in a very, um, uh, very close together and it really damaged Malaysian Airlines, um, even though arguably these were things that they couldn't have done much about. Um, there was the re re revelation, uh, there could be a revelation in the media about an internal scandal. You know, Tesco had horse meat. They've also had an accounting scandal in recent years. VW had the emissions um, cheating. Uh, that was revealed in the media. So that can have a real impact on a company, you know, and there's all sorts of things that could go wrong. Uh, a fire is another example. So um, what is the contingency planning process? Well, first of all, we need to identify the issues <clears throat> that could potentially go wrong. We could rate them in terms of the, give them a score maybe out of 10 in terms of the possible impact on the company and the likelihood of occurring. So each um, uh, contingency would then have a score out of 20 and we would prioritise the ones that would have the highest possible impact and have the highest likelihood of occurring to actually consider what we would do if, we would, if those things happen. We set the contingency plan, we think through exactly what we do, and that plan needs to be communicated to the relevant people so they know how to respond in that situation. A key thing is to practice the implementation of that plan, like what happens when if something does go wrong. So, you know, like I say, you do fire drills at school as a matter of um, uh, following the law. This is a picture of a simulation of a terrorist attack on London. We hope that this never, ever happens, but 
we've got contingency plans in place in case they do and if we don't practice actually implementing our um, uh, contingency plan then there's no point in having it really okay so what's the value of contingency planning well it's going to it's going to make you identify the potential issues that are that are threatening your company and then you consider the likelihood of them occurring and the potential impact which allows you to take a, a kind of logical approach to contingency planning you know it's far more effective to plan for a contingency that's likely to happen and could cause a big negative impact than one that's highly unlikely to happen so it helps you um, contingency planning helps you set your um, time and prioritize correctly in terms of what you should be focusing on this the contingency planning will create clarity and focus should the contingency occur um, because everyone should know what to do you go into crisis mode and if it's been clearly communicated all right people are unlikely to be happy at the time but at least they know that there's a plan which should help them perform and they can concentrate on getting their jobs done um, rather than there being confusion and chaos and I mean also just the process of going through and knowing that something um, uh, bad could occur encourages flexible thinking um, it encourages you know should an unforeseen contingency occur you might think oh yeah we, we've uh, planned for something similar to this or in that situation we'd have done this so in this situation we should do that and um, it's just going to make you more flexible in your thinking if you thought through things that could go wrong finally it's better to have a plan that's not used uh, than to have no plan at all okay if you've got a plan um, people will be more confident and uh, it's better to have one and not use it than to you know potentially go into chaos when that event occurs